course, in the first half of this year. The company, which uh, listed in Moscow in April, said it had, quote, benefited tremendously from its own forest resources as the cost of raw wood spiked earlier this year. Uh, we're pleased to have with us uh, Rovshan uh, Aliyev, uh, the CFO of Segeza. Uh, Rovshan, nice to see you on the program this morning. We've obviously seen a cycle through the last 18 months, which has seen paper and pulp prices and consequently uh, the price of uh, raw materials rise very sharply. But that international price appears to be rolling over now. Is this, do you think, the best you're going to deliver through this economic cycle? Categorize the period for us. Yeah, look, thanks, first of all, for having me on show. Uh, secondly, indeed, post-COVID, uh, the market have recovered and recovered uh, strongly. We have seen uh, the, the pricing recovery across all the products. However, in some cases, uh, the pricing recovery was not as fast as uh, across the board. So something is going uh, rapidly and slowly going to back. For example, for the sack paper, the price is only recovering in a Q3 to the post uh, prior to, prior, uh, to COVID periods. However, uh, despite of uh, extremely uh, positive market condition driven by the construction industry as well as in, uh, industrials around the world, the inflation uh, has been a big concern of a lot of manufacturers. And here, what differentiates us from everybody else, we are uh, in full control of uh, our main cost line of uh, raw wood. We are uh, relatively young, but the company that manages today the largest forestry resource base around the international peers. We are supplying an 80% of our own wood. So for us, our margins are yet uh, to grow because uh, the cost is on the control side and the market is a positive. Obviously, in the, uh, the Russian economy, as we've seen in other economies, there is this growing uh, um, a retail uh, a path to market, which is e-commerce, which involves more packaging, and, and um, obviously that, that involves more creation of cardboard and more forestry products. Do you see any reason why that trend will weaken going forward. We're all speculating, I think, what the post-COVID period means in terms of parcels and packaging costs. Yeah, look, uh, I don't think there is uh, any way going back. I think there's only going uh, in the one direction, and that direction is an increasing uh, into toward more packaging solution, which is from a pure fiber. There is uh, two reasons for that. Uh, first, uh, there is... Uh, population as a population grow and as a popularity of that product is growing people are more accustomed now to it so rather than before they were accustomed more to the plastic packaging secondly the, the people are more and more now uh, around and focusing on the sustainable packaging and there is nothing in the world that is more ecological friendly and more sustainable as a product that this product made from the fiber uh, our product for example is a fully degradable and actually considered as a top of the notch in the eco-friendly packaging around the world. So we'll, we'll see, and we see it in real numbers, and that's why we keep uh, expanding and uh, investing into the more packaging and uh, conversion uh, around the Russia as well as in, in around the Euro. Now that trend is only going to grow. Roshan, I and our viewers have no idea the scale of the country sometimes. I mean, it's absolutely enormous. Half of it's covered by trees. I, I read in one piece of copy 640 billion trees in Russia. I mean, the, your country is absolutely ludicrously enormous. But that brings with its problems as well. We've seen some of the biggest forest fires in history in areas such as Yakutia uh, recently, which was covering, and again, staggering numbers, one million hectares were covered by this forest fire as well. Climate change, sir, how much is it presenting challenges for you uh, and potentially opportunities? Look, uh, in reality, when we look at this uh, forest uh, fires and, and we look at the climate change, uh, in 99% uh, of the chances, and this is already proved um, by statistics, those are the forest who is not belong to anybody, the forest that is not overlooked. And you actually, once you have the forest and you manage it as a business and you manage it in a sustainable manner, and we take our forest uh, as our babies. So uh, nothing has happened to the forest that has been in the hand of the private individuals or in the businesses. 
So in principle, with the climate change, is actually also a bit of a positive thing because it opens up the areas where uh, priorly or before you wouldn't be able to, to reach and to have an efficiently uh, forestry uh, management uh, to be set up. So indeed, Russia is uh, not only the, the largest uh, wood uh, um, place in the world, but what's more uh, clear and what's more important, it has a lot of soft wood, which is a, a more rare around the world. And this is where the in, entire the quarry guard and the packaging that needs uh, a strong uh, uh, characteristics are, can only be made. So and those are only in three places in the world, in Europe and uh, in Russia and in the United States, North America. And in North America and in Europe, the penetration rate of that forestry is already at such a high level that the further increase are not be able uh, to be done economically or even uh, possible uh, from physical physical perspective. So Russia remains the only place in the world where there's actually the soft wood are available in large quantity. So all future growth in uh, in the world in the demand on the packaging I will be able to supply to from Russia and we as actually as a company are great but positioned uh, to have that to ride that way. Yeah, and it is fascinating. You mentioned the, the positive effects of climate change opening up areas which were previously not commercial, but I, I suppose one could argue the same for sea routes, one could argue the same for hydrocarbons as well, which previously were unattainable now in the Arctic and elsewhere. Uh, your peers in the extraction industry will be able to attain as well. Looking forward to COP26, sir, as well, uh, is, what is the, 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 the broader thing that you are offering to the world, saying, look, Russia can do this as well? Because, of course, there are people in those extractive industries, Mr. Sechin and others, who look at the opportunities for more extraction rather than less extraction. Can Russia offset that uh, with what you can offer? Uh, indeed. And I think when you look at the amount of the forestry which is available in Russia, uh, what also is important that uh, despite that uh, the forestry management and the forestry woodworking business is uh, developing through the years, the, we are doing, and it's obligated by legislation, 100% of replantation. So, and this is a huge potential that I believe today is a mislook. Uh, even for us, like for the, for the company, uh, if we uh, account for our forestry resource base with the same uh, mathematical or calculation as the Canadians or some of the Scandinavian country, we would have been uh, having a, a CO2 positive and we will be able actually to make a business out of it and uh, setting the certifications uh, left and right for the people who and the industries who is in, in need. So I think the forestry, as in general, in Russia are significantly overlooked for the benefit that is bring from the CO2 emission perspective. So I think once this is uh, set up and done, and I'm sure the world will give it a, a fair valuation, uh, we will be a beneficiary of it. In general, the Russian forest, uh, in my personal opinion, is significantly undervalued. Uh, Rob Shan, it's not without increased scrutiny, though, and um, Earthsight put out a report uh, quite recently where they made the case that Ikea was uh, using wood, this is just an allegation, but using wood that was unjustifiably taken from the Russian Far East and Siberia. I wonder if you can just comment on these kind of uh, NGO and think tank led reports, which increasingly are suggesting that some companies maybe are not using best practice when it comes to the wonderful resources you have in uh, Siberia and Russia Far East. Uh, look, uh, in general, the industry has been developing uh, tremendously, and over the past year, I believe it has turned around uh, completely from uh, top to bottom. It used to be uh, a small individual, so the private small companies. Now it's uh, taking uh, more by the larger businesses who is looking at it rather than the short term, more in the long term. And once uh, the companies start looking to it more to the long term, they start to manage and uh, care about the forestry resources much more. We have seen that uh, across the board. And uh, what is another point is, for example, I'll give you my example, and a lot of Russian big players are following the same lead. Uh, in, in the Segeja, we are participating in a global market. We are selling our product to the more than 100 countries. So to, to be competitive and to also to prove that our products is uh, uh, done in a sustainable, produced in a sustainable manner, and 89% of our old forestry is certified by the International Forestry Stewardship Council. And this certification that is done on an annual basis, 
and they're managing, they're going from the forestry in the great detail uh, and manage it and confirming that yes, indeed, they, they're doing everything right. And I think the more and more the, the, the forestry uh, will be moving into the, uh, the control of the businesses, who is looking at it the more in, uh, long, long term, uh, the more mm, it would be beneficial. Well, and the much. more you will be having a, a more clear uh, pass to the end customers. Thanks so much for joining us uh, and giving us the insights. Uh, Rob Shan Aliyev, uh, the CFO of uh, Segeza. You've flown over much of that part of the world because you went down to Sakhalin a couple of times ago, didn't you? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, yes. Just mile after mile after mile after mile. Yes, of... yeah. But, but you've probably flown over it. I mean, a lot of the routes out to Asia take you over yeah. Siberia and the Far East anyway. So, Phenomenal. if you, I mean, it's one of those ones where you look down and all you see is tree canopy. People forget for it's the biggest country on the planet by a long way as well. Amazing. Right.